Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Triple M's Hot Breakfast on this Tuesday, September 10, 2019. It's three and a half minutes after six. It's 7.8 degrees on the way to 15 today. Thanks to Alexis of Blackburn. And it is uh, with a, a broken heart this morning, the Triple M's Hot Breakfast uh, uh, broadcast to Melbourne, uh, particularly uh, because of the passing yesterday of our great friend and colleague in Danny Frawley. Uh, Luke Darcy joins me this morning. Uh, Luke, uh, first of all, congratulations to you and your team last night on Talking Football for a a fitting uh, commemoration of the life and times of our great mate Danny Frawley, who died yesterday in a single car accident uh, outside his uh, hometown of Ballarat. Uh, It's fair to say, Darcy, that uh, you you and I have spoken to each other yesterday a number of times. We've spoken to all our colleagues in the media and uh, we are collectively devastated. Uh, We don't need to go any further than that in so many ways other than to remember the great times of a great friend Danny and the uh, the lessons we learned from his wonderful life and it was a wonderful life that uh, ended a day after his 56th birthday and uh, welcome to you this morning. Mate. Yeah they said uh, morning Rosie yeah it's very uh, very hard Dad, to be honest with you. I'm yes, finding yeah. it harder this morning to be honest with you in some ways uh, I was driving in to uh, yeah. Channel 7 yesterday and uh, the call came through and you just had to pull over the side of the road and just, you know, total devastation. And you do immediately think of uh, the ramifications of that. You know, as you said, 56 years of age, but, you know, you leave behind three beautiful daughters and uh, we all know Anita, Danny's beautiful wife, who it's such a small industry, our industry, that you you link together, you know, in so many different ways. And, and you know, every time you were around Spud, you just, you just lit up the, the, the environment you're in. I think sometimes... You know, I remember the first time walking into the Triple M box and it was larger than life. It was full of personality, but it was actually full of a lot of care that was misunderstood sometimes. And 99% of the humor was always aimed within the four walls. It was never about, uh, you know, um, trying to upset people outside of that. It was just the inner workings of a football club and that footy club humor that I love. I grew up on that. But if you were in trouble... Uh, people like Danny Frawley put their arm around you and, you know, everyone yeah. at the moment wants to put their arm around the Frawley family and it's very hard to get the words out it, to be honest with you, to yeah, I'm with you, articulate Dash. how I'm we with feel you. about it because it's as sad as it's sad as it's get. I, you know, there's so many tragic things happen in life, but uh, this one's as, uh, as hit all of us in the industry as hard as I can remember. Yeah, and uh, your point, Dars, about how uh, the footy world is, it, it, it it's a funny game. I mean, people who listen to our show listen to it because of the same sort of banter we have with each other. And it is, it's, I, I find football. I remember when, when I first got involved uh, as president of Collingwood, I said to Carla, you're going to meet some of the best people you'll ever meet in life in this circle of people. Uh, you know, there'll be some heartache and some sacrifice along the way, but you'll meet some really, really great people. And uh, that's what keeps all of us in it. Uh, it's the love of the game. It's why, you know, we're still hanging around footy clubs and young blokes coming through and now yeah. young women. It's great. It's extended all the way through. And uh, you, you're right. I think people sometimes on the outside uh, don't quite get uh, the, the love and respect that's in there. And it's moments like this where everybody's completely shattered. And I, I agree with your point as well. Today is, is really tough. And it's probably only when you, you start actually saying the words into the microphone that it really hits you. Because yesterday we all received the news and we all rang each other. And, uh, you know, in many occasions you had to break the news to, to people who were really close friends of Danny. And you wanted to be a person to tell somebody in your circle rather than they hear it on the news and it was getting out on Instagram and all the social medias and things like that. And, you know, I had to you know, ring Tony Shaw, for example, who was his coach. Uh, they were they were coaching partners when I was at, down at Collingwood. Danny was, a, Danny was one of the greatest St Kilda people ever. And then he came to Collingwood and he was a phenomenal Collingwood person. He grew up barracking for the Pies. He was related to Des Tudnam, as, you know, the whole Ballarat community are. But at St Kilda, he was the captain before he was captain of the Ballarat crew. He was the young guy who was pulling together people like Greg Burns and Joffa Cunningham and Fader Cunningham and uh, uh, even Robbie Muir, and, uh, who was an, an older player by that stage, but particularly Tony Lockett and bringing them down. And, and I got to know him through uh, my our mutual great friend, Trevor Barker, whose uh, death had a profound effect on both of us as well. And then, then he came to Collingwood, then of course was the Richmond. And, you know, Dars, I'll never forget one of the more amazing uh, broadcast I've ever been involved in was the fact was the night that Danny Frawley at Richmond when we had the cameras as much trained on his family during that uh, horrible period where the week before he'd been spat out by the crowd and the, the emotion building into it and that's what I think I go back to in the last 24 hours was just how strong his family was I mean to see his father there and when Danny came through to see him just turn to the crowd and see Anita and his brothers and his family and his sisters and his dad and his mum and hugging them 
And you yeah. can see that sense of support from the whole Ballarat and particularly the Frawley clan. And, and that's what that's what Spud was. And, and that's what he did. He offered his hand and his hug every time he saw you in one way. Yeah. Whether he was he was hanging on you for something stupid you'd done during the week or, you know, the last time I saw him was Saturday night uh, in at Fox Footy. I was hosting the, the last game to us and he came in, was about to do bounce. And as always, he came over, gave me a hug, shook my hand and said, well done last night. Tell Bucks and the boys, you know, good luck and go all the way. And he was so generous. He just was really, every time he, you saw him, he gave everything to you. You walked away having been enriched by his experience. Yeah, and in recent times, he has been really open about his own battles and his own struggles uh, with mental health and, and challenges that he's had in recent times. And, uh, you know, I know I've spoken to him about this a lot in recent times. He's wanted to break down the stereotype. If you look at Spud, you see a seventh generation Spud farmer from Bungaroo, you don't get any tougher than Danny Frawley. You, you know, you play foot against Spud, he was like a piece of granite. He was that sort of frame and that yeah. sort of hardness. And mentally and tough. Mentally and tough. Unbelievably, like yeah. incredible uh, athlete, incredible uh, aerobic athlete, but doesn't uh, discriminate in terms of the challenges yeah. of mental health. Now, historically, that hasn't been an easy subject for alpha males to talk about or males in this space or males on Triple M radio. Mm. Uh, and so that barrier has been broken down. And, and it is Danny Frawley. It is people like that who have opened their heart up and uh, and been vulnerable in that space. And I know, you know, there was a lot of challenges for Spud in recent times, but he was onto it. He was into everything yeah. to try and make it better. He was, you know, his la latest podcast series, uh, No Man Should Ever Walk Alone, Danny Frawley. Go and listen to that at the moment. It's all about, you know, him wanting to be open about some of the challenges that he was having. And so, uh, you know, uh, I think that recent, recent legacy, along with everything else, a great champion player, a great friend, great colleague, great fun. Um, you know, I think that in recent times is... Uh, is where I think of him yeah. as well. It's maybe as brave as he's been in any space. So. All right, Das. Um, we're gonna we'll talk to uh, some of the the friends, uh, and we'll have a laugh with uh, Danny Frawley this morning. Uh, you know, I think if we all think of bounce these days. We think of the old Sunday Footy Show. We certainly think of his time here with us at Triple M. Um, you know, he's the sort of guy. He's, he he drives everyone yeah. mad. He, he you know he's, he still rings our producers here at Triple M on a daily basis, and all his mates. Uh, he was driving up the bell. I'd said plenty of time just to ring people up. Yeah. Whenever he'd ring me, he always had an idea to help somebody. How, how do you reckon we should do this? I think so and so's doing it a bit tough. How do you reckon we can help? I think we should do this with women's football. I think we should do this with young kids. Ballarat, kids from the country aren't getting a fair enough go. Why don't we get them on the MCG? You That's get what he was all about. 20 text messages on a Saturday night calling the footy. He'd be sitting at home, uh, normally have a bottle of red spud, yeah. and uh, you'd get the texts to get more frequent as Saturday <laughs> night would go on. The advice he'd be giving you would get more frequent and more fruity as it would go on. And, <laughs> And if you walked in the Triple M box and, and there's something that you'd done during the week, you'd oh. look at you and go, you're going to cop it today. If he had something on oh, you. He, and he was that excited that he was going to give it to you. And then you just had to sit back and you cop five minutes of Spud's best. And then yeah. in the ad break, you come over and go, righto. All right, move on now. And that was the way he was. It was a rite of passage for so many of us. It's uh, coming up to 11 and a half minutes after six. Tuesday, September 10, 2019, 7.8 degrees, top of 15. Uh, we will pay tribute to Danny Frawley throughout the course of the morning. And if you've got any uh, any anecdotes, of which there will be legion because he just gave it himself to the community, one triple three five three. we'd love to hear from you this morning. And don't forget, if there are things that uh, you need to talk about, Lifeline offers a, a magnificent anonymous service at 13 11 14. That's 13 11 14 and beyond blue at one three hundred. 22 46 36 1 300 22 46 36 no man should stand alone is what Danny Frawley lived his life to the end trying to promulgate and it's something that we must now commemorate and uh, take to everybody uh, to make sure that everybody has got somebody to stand alongside them during hard times it's 12 minutes after six this is Triple M's hot